Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about general linear maps, matrices and what we can do with them. And in today's part 36 we go deeper into the theory behind the Jordan normal form. In particular we will define so-called generalized eigenspaces. However, before we explain how we can generalize eigenvectors, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. I'm really grateful for all the support, because you make it possible that I can create such math videos. And as you might already know, as a thank you, you can download additional material for the videos with the link in the description. And now without further ado, let's immediately continue our discussion about the Jordan normal form. Indeed we already know that this is just a very special square matrix. And in it most of the entries are zero, only two diagonals are occupied. So for example, we could have two different eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2. These we find on the main diagonal and above it we could find ones. Now the eigenvalues tell us about the Jordan blocks we have and the ones tell us about the Jordan boxes in them. So for example here in the first Jordan block we have two Jordan boxes and only one in the second block. And in fact we will see soon that the whole proof about the Jordan normal form is just about the behavior of these Jordan boxes. And you should see, in order to do that, we have to talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I can tell you, what we need to do is to generalize the concept of an eigenspace. Because if the ordinary eigenspaces are large enough, this matrix A here would be diagonalizable. And then the Jordan normal form is just a diagonal matrix and for that we already have the whole theory. Therefore, now everything is about an extension. So let's fix an eigenvalue lambda for our matrix A, which means we already know that we have eigenvectors. This means the following kernel here is non-trivial. And you know we always have A minus lambda times the identity matrix. Exactly this is the definition of the eigenspace associated to the eigenvalue lambda. And there it could happen that the dimension of this space could be less than the algebraic multiplicity of lambda. And indeed, in this case we immediately know that A is not diagonalizable. And therefore the natural question would be, can we increase this dimension when we consider powers? And as we will see soon, this is actually the correct step into the direction of the Jordan normal form. Hence we introduce a new name here, this is what we call the generalized eigenspace of rank K. So in particular this means if we have rank 1, we have our ordinary eigenspace again. And moreover, now we also want to talk about generalized eigenvectors as well. This is quite simple, we just take an element from our kernel here, but we also want that x is not an element from the kernel before. This means we subtract the set where we have the kernel with the power k-1. And this guarantees that we actually have the rank k for this vector. And that also explains the name such an x is called a generalized eigenvector of rank k. And now one of the first things we can notice here is that it could be possible to reduce the rank of x if we multiply with our matrix. Indeed this operation is quite simple but still important to note. Now let's assume that we have a generalized eigenvector of rank k. Then we just multiply our given matrix a minus lambda times the identity to the power k minus 1 to it. And now we see this would be the zero vector if this power was one higher. However, exactly this implies that this new vector here lies in the kernel with power 1. Hence rank k means that we lie in our original ordinary eigenspace again. And moreover, we also know that we cannot land at the zero vector already, because we know we are not in the kernel of the lower power. So this means we get out ordinary eigenvectors with this combination here. So you see, the new name generalized eigenvector makes sense, because such a vector becomes an eigenvector after some multiplications. Moreover, what we get with the generalized eigenspaces is a whole chain of subspaces. 
In fact, the subspaces cannot get smaller if we increase the power. So for example, we would say we have the smallest subspace, just the zero vector, if we have the power zero. So this is just a common notation. If we have the power zero, then this whole matrix just represents the identity matrix. And the kernel of the identity matrix is just the zero vector. And now we know that the ordinary eigenspace is definitely larger than that. And then in the next step, when we increase to the power two, we could get larger as well. However, there it could definitely happen that the space stays exactly the same, which means we only have the subset relation that includes equality as well. So in general, we cannot say more, but we definitely always have the subset relation if we increase the index k. So we could write if we go from k to k plus one, we have this inclusion. So this means we could increase the index as much as we want, but at some point nothing will happen anymore. To be precise, everything has to lie in the finite dimensional vector space Cn. So this immediately implies that most of the subset relations here are actually equalities. So for example, we already know the first one is definitely not an equality, so the dimension increases from left to right. And obviously this increase in the dimension is always given by a natural number, which means the smallest possible one would be given by one. Hence in total in the whole chain, we could not have more than n jumps. Therefore at some point, this whole infinite chain has to be stable. Or to say it in other words, it's actually just a finite chain because at some power we can just end it. And there I can already tell you, this number is called the fitting index. However, before we do that in the general case, let's first discuss a nice concrete example. And there I would say it already makes sense to consider a typical Jordan box. So we have a triangular matrix and let's say the number two is on the diagonal. And if it's just one Jordan box, we have ones above the diagonal as well. Okay, so this is our three times three matrix where two is our only eigenvalue. So this means we don't have to distinguish between the eigenvalues, we just have one and then we can calculate the generalized eigenspaces. Hence, we have to calculate the powers of the following matrix. This is quite simple, we subtract two on the diagonal, so only the ones above the diagonal remain. Hence, calculating the powers of this matrix is not hard at all. And moreover, also calculating the kernels is quite simple. In fact, for our first power, we already have the row echelon form, so we can read the whole kernel immediately. So you see, we have two pivots here and only one free variable. Therefore, this kernel is definitely just one dimensional. And now it gets interesting. Let's see if in the next step, the dimension is increased or not. Hence, now we have to do the matrix multiplication of this matrix with itself. And then we see what comes out are a lot of zeros and just one one. And we find it in the top right corner. So again, we don't have to do any row operations because the row echelon form is already there. And there we see we only have one pivot, so two free variables. And this immediately implies that our generalized eigenspace here is two-dimensional. So we actually have a jump in the dimension and we can go to the next one. And there we have our matrix three times in the matrix product. And calculating that gives us the zero matrix. And there it's immediately clear that our kernel is three-dimensional. And of course we will stay at the zero matrix when we increase our power even more. So what we see here is that our chain from before is done after three steps because afterwards nothing changes anymore. And as we learn soon, there we would say that the fitting index is given by three. So maybe this seems quite trivial here, but we will see that the existence of such a fitting index in general has some nice implications. In particular, it's the key to the Jordan normal form transformation. And there I can already tell you, this is exactly what the next video will be about. So I really hope I meet you there again and have a nice day. Bye bye.